Did you know that we are born to care about others? It's true. This part of our noggin right here, it's where empathy lives. That's right. It's literally part of who we are. And get this, the more we practice empathy, the more we care. This concept not only helped our next guest overcome adversity as a young boy, but inspired his mission to grow empathy around the world. Meet a myth, Donani, with a great story and a big and beautiful dream. And you are on an empathy mission, aren't you? Yes, ma'am. So how would you define empathy? Well, I mean, I'd say it's to really understand someone else's emotions and their circumstances, to, you know, have that mutual experience and develop a human connection between two people. Um, it's different from anything else. So it's like putting yourself in somebody else's shoes? Exactly. So exactly. it's a little different from compassion. Yeah, I mean, I'd say compassion is more so just caring about someone, whereas empathy is really kind of understanding, you know, making the effort to understand them. So why is empathy such an important thing to you? You have a personal story from which all of this right, arose. Right, um, Well, when I grew up, I had a speech impediment. Um, I, uh, you know, in elementary school, I lack of self-confidence was a big thing. I was very shy. Got teased a lot, but that wasn't the biggest thing. It was more of a mental conflict. Like every time I would be considered kind of different um, because I couldn't say my C's, my Q's, my S's, my X's. Um, and that prevented me from having self-confidence. It prevented me from moving forward. And uh, going into middle school is the same old deal. Couldn't speak in a, in a crowd of 10 people. Um, and then in eighth grade, tried out for the Montron debate team. That's amazing. So you tried out for a debating team, but you had a recent history of a speaking impediment. Yeah. That tells me a lot about you right there, it, it was, Amit, seriously. And the thing is, um, trying out for the team was a risk in itself. Um, and, uh, but it was, it was a mission in my own part, like, hey, let me do this. And uh, that eighth grade year was the most, you know, I call it a miracle because of the things, the amount of hours I spent working with them, but they just had faith in me. They had the faith in me that no one else had before. Very recently, a year and a half ago, mm -hmm. something came to you. Tell yep. us about it. The idea of my name, my story, um, the name was something that just came from original thought. I was just like, this sounds good. My and name, my story. My name, my it's story. It's on your t-shirt. It is on my t-shirt up and here. Its central premise is that our story is our identity. Exactly. But what do we have to do with that story in order to grow empathy? Right. Um, so we have the website where you know people post their stories of inspiration. We have people who, you know, one girl who survived 9/11. Um, we have people who've overcome things like bullying, family issues. We have people who've done incredible things, like a 15-year-old who's found a cure for pancreatic cancer. Incredible, incredible people. And from there, it just kept going. And then, you know, February, I think it was 14th of 2012, we were featured on Yahoo News um, as one of, well, as an article. We just sent out a press release and they picked us up. Right when that happened, that was the turning point for the organization. We kept on sending out press releases, kept on telling people, and it just took off. So, people got word of it. How have people begun to spread this message? Right. Through what means? Right. First, first activity that we did uh, tangibly is My Name, My Stories. In the summer of 2012, we did a book drive. A book drive. Started off with eight, I believe, of my friends sitting in my house. And I was like, yo, we're doing a book drive. I have 1,000 books in my house. I need you to sort, box, and label them. Now. That number, <laughs> exactly. That number transformed to 5,000. Wait, wait, what? What? 5,000 what? 5,000 books. So from 1,000 to 5,000. 1,000 to 5,000 books. That happened in three weeks. And then? We went to the Children's Hospital, one of the places we donated, and they were so appreciative. It was sure. incredible. UCLA, all these other places, and we were like, wow. Like, just driving there, getting that experience was incredible. So the book drive led to other projects, like? Random Acts of Kindness, um, you know, reading to kids. we working on a Build a School project this year. We're going to do different diversity activities like mitz it up lunches, disaster relief support from the Boston bombings. It's really what we like to do is based on the problem and based on where you are, we try and hit the problem that's at home. We're doing Inspire Empathy events, which is something that um, I go in and talk to kids about having empathy and developing who they are or another leader in a different area. Um, we're working with places like Teach for America and the KIPP LA schools. So we're really trying to develop a curriculum that is sustainable to develop empathy. And that is the eventual goal. You know, in a year and a half, we've done what some organizations take 10 years to do. So for all the work that you do with schools, the book drives, the reading to kids, et cetera, mm -hmm. you also came up with a great way for schools to actually start a club. Right, right, right. So tell us about that. Well, basically, it's really simple. You know, you go on the website, join the MNOS community, go over to school clubs, and you have your supervisor or teacher just sign off on it. 
and then we're going to give you the resources. You know, we're going to be in direct contact with you, telling you, you know, where the problem is in your area, what you can do, what the possibilities are, and then from there, it's you know, b building leaders, and they're going out and doing stuff. Was there a moment where you realized, wow, this really is working? Yeah, uh, actually, uh, I was going over to an event in Seattle, We Day, and uh, I got a email. It was posted as a story on the website on the side, and an email to the organization from a girl in Ohio. She was 14 or 15, and she said, uh, this past few months I felt worthless. I felt like I don't matter. I was contemplating different things, and I, 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 didn't, uh, I wasn't feeling good about myself. Um, and uh, then she says, thank you to whoever or whatever group put together this organization and this website, because these stories have truly given me a new sense of hope. They have truly made me feel like I'm worth something else. And I mean, you get emotional just telling me the it story. Was, it was, it was incredible. The fact that we've changed one life in a positive way in itself is a difference. Amit, you are inspiring people with your story. Keep it up. Thank you. Amazing work. We want to see where this is all going. Thank you. Appreciate that. If you want to keep up with Amit's amazing work and share your story, check out mynamemystory.org, and we'll be right back.